and welcome to Top Story Live in the studios this morning for us for our very first section. We are talking to our illustrious mayor, Christian Provenzano. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me here. Appreciate no the No problem at all. Now, I know you're busy, you know, campaigning and just doing that, oh, I don't know, running the city job. Yeah. Um, I wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit about the picketing that, that sure. happened last week yeah. because I think there's some confusion around it. Um, you know, you sort of hear one side, you hear the other side, and you don't know what is really legitimate. There's there's obviously an issue there. There is. There's an issue there, and I'm happy to take the opportunity to, to walk through it. So I'm going to go through this pretty slowly because it, it's... Uh, it's a long-standing issue. Okay. So right now there are two le legal issues. So one legal issue is with is between two unions. So we have the carpenters union, we have the laborers union. And I should say this is for the exterior. Yeah. Refurbishing. So what, what, yeah. What we're talking about is the cladding project at City yes. Hall. And last week there was a picket outside the City Hall, and the laborers union were taking issue with the cladding project and how work was being assigned. So there's two different issues that we have to deal with here. One doesn't really involve the city. It's the laborers union essentially indicating that the carpenters union is doing work that it should be doing. And the carpenters union is saying we're not uh, doing work it should be doing, we're doing our own work. So that's a dispute that the city's caught up in, but that's between the two unions. Oh, but, I see. Okay. But there is a second dispute, uh, and it's, 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 it's a dispute that directly relates to the city. And I think this is largely the issue that the laborers union has. So the city has a construction employer designation. Sault Ste. Marie is one of four municipalities in the province of Ontario that has this designation. Okay. And as a result of this construction employer designation, it's long standing, we've had it for years, we've had it for decades. As a result of this designation, when we tender certain work and jobs, and the cladding project falls into this classification, when we tender that work, uh, the responding parties to the tender have to be unionized. Okay? And, and this is decades old. This is decades old. So specifically uh, carpenters and laborers. So uh, the bids came back, the responses came back, and the city decided to go with a company out of Timmins called Syro because in accord with our policies, they were the lowest bid. Mm -hmm. Now we have to recognize something that's really important here. They were the lowest bid by $3 million. Wow. Yes. So there was a $3 million, just roughly a $3 million difference between their bid and the next lowest bid. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. So, Syro, and this is the crux of the issue. So this is what pe this is what this is the what the picking, this yeah. is what the legal issues uh, one of the the two legal issues is about. Syro is carpenters unionized. Okay. So they are carpenters unionized. So the city was contracting properly with a carpenters unionized body. Syro is not laborers unionized. Ah. Uh. But Syro, through to the city, made. Uh, contractual obligations to the city. So Syro made contractual commitments to the city that Syro would only use labor unionized employees. So uh, even though they're Which not- Which is what they should have done and what they had to agree to. Yeah, so we have to, on these projects, have carpenter unionized and labor unionized employees. Yes. We recognize that, we respect that, we intend on proceeding on projects properly with carpenters unionized and labor's unionized. Syro's carpenters unionized. So in the contract the city entered into with Syro, uh, Syro committed to the city that they would use labor unionized. So uh, that was the undertaking that we got. Right. Okay. So we feel, the city feels like it satisfied its obligations as a construction employer because we directly contracted with the carpenters unionized outfit and that outfit uh, committed to us to use uh, labor. Laborers. Unionized labor. Right. Okay. So uh, we satisfied our obligations in our opinion. And that's why you hired them. That's yes. So I think the issue that the laborers union is taking is they're taking the position, I believe, and this will be worked out at the Labor Relations Board, that CSIRO should be both carpenters unionized and laborers unionized. And we shouldn't have contracted with them because they weren't labor unionized. They weren't labor. They were just carpenters. So there's the legal issue. Right. So everybody needs to understand that there's a legal issue. So it's so, not so so in your mind they applied they they tendered for the job yeah. as carpenters. Carpenters Union, I Yes, that. but they also made the provisions that you asked for and said, we're going to, we're carpenters, but we're going to hire laborers. Yeah, we, we in the contract, we right. said you have to hire unionized labor. And they, so they signed it, so... Th th right. Yeah, they committed that to us. So, so from the city's perspective, we discharge our responsibility. And here's, the, here's, the, here's where the issue really with the rubber hits the road. If the laborers unionized position is correct, that means the city shouldn't have accepted the lowest bid it should have selected the next bid. And that means the city should have paid roughly $3 million more for this project. 
Hmm. That's a really hard position for the city to accept. The city doesn't believe that we should have had the taxpayers of the city pay three million more for this project. Like I said, it's a ton of money. It's a it's a big difference. Mm -hmm. So. What a lot of people in the community might not be aware of is that this city council uh, over the past uh, number of years has been talking about and, and addressing this matter. And what we did was we passed a resolution, it was passed by city council, which sees staff uh, put the city in a position, if it so chooses, to challenge this designation. Challenging the designation as a construction employer is going to take a number of years. But the next mayor and council will have the tools they need to do that if they choose to do that. And I can tell you, I think it's very likely that they will choose to do that. Uh, if the Labor Relations Board says, we shouldn't have picked the low bid, we should have picked the second bid. Because you're going to have, I certainly intend to be the mayor, and I hope I'm there, and I hope I can participate in this. But whomever the mayor is and whomever the councillors are, if the Labor Relations Board says, well, you should have picked the second bid, mm -hmm. you shouldn't have picked the first one that was the lowest, then they're going to be looking at that, and they'll have a specific example of a project that would have cost multi-million multi more because of the designation. So Councillor Shoemaker has been making this point, he's been making it effectively, that we should have open tendering processes. And I really want to take a, a, a moment here to yeah, explain this to everybody. Yeah. The, the city's issue with the construction employer designation isn't an anti-union issue. If anybody rep represents it that way, I, I think they're misrepresenting it. Uh, what the city is saying is that everybody should be able to respond to the tender union, non-union, as it is now, it's only specific unions that can respond. So there's unions that are left out of our tendering process. And then there's all the non-union workers that right. are left out of our tendering process. So you want to open it up to everybody? Yes. So the city's efforts aren't anti-union. The city's efforts are pro-open tendering. So we have tendering restrictions right now. And that's what the city takes issue with. We don't want to have restrictions on our tendering. We want our tendering to be open to everybody so we can drive value for the taxpayer and we can make sure the city can award its contracts uh, right across the board. Mm -hmm. But right now it's restricted. So we're restricted in how we can award them. So that's the, the work that we're doing. And this city council has decided to take that issue on. And we've instructed staff to do the work that they need to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, to put us in a position to challenge that designation. And that will uh, have to be decided at the beginning of 2019 because it will affect the budget. So uh, the next budget deliberations will see this decision in those budget deliberations. And I, uh, I think you know it, a lot will depend on how this works out. But in any event, uh, this course of action in the picketing last week goes to kind of make the point that City Council was focused on a few months back when we made this decision. Right, right. Thank you so much for clearing that up for us. Well, I'm happy to be here, and I think it's really important that people in the community I do too. Are, are, uh, have the information they need to assess these Absolutely, issues. Absolutely, because the more information we have, the better we can make sure. our decisions. Yeah, I'm 100% with you. I'm happy to be Thank here. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Good to see you again. Yeah, thanks for having me on. We're going to do some more news and some more talk right after this. And welcome back to you on TV. So happy to have one of our very own in the studios with us this morning to talk about a couple of different things. Riley Smith, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Awesome. Thank you so much. Hope you had an awesome weekend. <sighs> I did. It was great. Terrific. Now, talk about some of the things that you're going to be looking at on Council's agenda tonight. Okay. So on Council's agenda, um, there's a few different things mm -hmm. uh, that look kind of interesting to me. Um, so the police chief is giving an update on um, policing in the Sioux. Oh, good. So Agenda's a little big, but that's kind of, that should be interesting. I mean, we've had Chief Stevenson in here before. And, and he's, isn't he? He's, he's great. So, uh, he's very vocal. transparent, yes, too. Yes, yes. Um, another thing, Lop Lops um, is wanting to host an Oktoberfest event in the Sioux and make it like a sig municipally significant event. That's So great. they're talking about that. Um, there's a couple other things, too. Second Line Road Study member J.J. Hillsinger um, brought forward. With signage. Yeah, so they're talking about that. So there's a few things going on at Council tonight. Um, and Civic Affairs is the show um, mm -hmm. that I will be doing on Monday nights at 7 o'clock live with Andy Martin. Tonight's who, your first one. Tonight is my first one, Terrific. so I'm really excited. Um, and those are kind of some of the issues that will be coming up at Council. But this show starts after Council is, okay. well, Council will be either done or just about, just about finishing right, up. Right. Um, but we'll always be talking about these issues, the issues that are discussed at council, and we'll also be talking with candidates for the upcoming election. 
We'll be talking with city staff. And we'll also eventually, we'll be talking to normal people that have mm -hmm. municipal concerns. The show is all about local politics, municipal politics, um, and uh, municipal issues. So and such perfect timing with the municipal election yes. coming up at the end of October. Yeah, so this week um, we have our guests book, uh, booked for tonight. We have um, the mayor of North Bay. Um, Al McDonald is going to be Skyping in um, to talk a little bit about uh, his perspective on, you know, being a northern community. And I think it'll be kind of interesting to get a different perspective. Because we're compared somewhat to, to North, North Bay. Bay. We're, we're bigger, yeah. uh, population-wise. I interviewed him years ago. Did you? Yeah, you'll like him. He's oh, a very, awesome. very um, open, very yeah. easy interview. I met him at uh, Nalum when uh -huh. we had all the mayors here, and he was great. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, and then we have some new candidates, because it is there's a council meeting tonight, so we don't have any incumbents that we right. can interview. But we do have um, Derek Pierce from Ward 1, Tim Marsh from Ward 4, and Matt Scott from Ward 5. These are all new faces. And we're going to be asking them some tough questions. We're going to be asking them how, not just what they would do differently, but how would they do it differently? Yeah. How, how are you actually going to pull it off? So. Well, and you know what? I think that's key because right now there's so many issues with, what with you know, the, the back taxes from Algoma Steel uh, to the Norgoma. Those are issues that everybody is talking right. about. So it'll be good to have them say, okay, we're going to fix the Norgoma. We want it to stay. Well, how are you going to do that? And I think it's important because I think as a new face, it's easy to say what you would do. Um, but to actually figure out how you would do it and how you would get on common ground with all the other counselors, you have 11 other people that you have to agree with. So um, I want to challenge them in that sense because I think um, for an incumbent, you know, to say what they would do differently is a little bit more challenging because we've already seen what they can do. Um, so I do want to challenge, that's part of what I really want to do with this um, show, is challenge people who are running for politics and actually hold them accountable to the things they're saying. It's easy to make a promise, but how are you going to fulfill that promise? Especially because I think for our viewers, that's what happens so much, because we see from the outside in Absolutely. to council, and we, we end up seeing the final decisions, and we think, what were they thinking? And well, now this show will help process. you to understand the process, because there's a really lengthy process. It's true, and I'm really looking forward to it. I did study politics in school this, this so this is really my um, this is something that I'm really passionate mm -hmm. about so I'm really looking forward to it so it'll be every Monday night at seven o'clock on TV live um, live yeah and it's a half hour hour um, it is a half hour no it's an hour it's, it's an, an hour, hour show. long yeah it kind of depends on on what's what, going on what's happening yeah um, sure. this week we have four guests so it'll be an hour um, next for the following week on the 17th we have um, Paul Christian and Marchie Bruni booked for sure, so awesome. two incumbents, which will be great. Um, and we don't have the other guests finalized yet, right. but so far we definitely have those two. Marchie's my counselor, so I'm sure he'll do an awesome job. Yeah, and we've been we've been chatting a lot about some other stories, so I'm looking Good. forward to hearing some of his input. And Andy Martin's yeah. like a political guru. Yeah, right? so it's it's kind of awesome to have him as a, a resource. I mean, mm -hmm. we you know the other day we sat together and we brainstormed some questions and just bounced ideas off each other, and it's kind of great. Like he's you know he's older. Mm -hmm. and we have two different perspectives, but right. to bring those together, I think it's it's a dynamic kind of duo um, and I think it'll end up uh, with some really interesting results. And, so. and the fact that Andy has run in municipal elections a couple of times. Oh yeah, he knows the process. He sort of knows a little bit more of, of the inside And he track. knows the counselors pretty yeah. well too. So yeah, I'm learning a lot from him too, which is great. I mean, I learn something every day on this job. As yes, you, know, but you can't help it. No, you can't help it. Even if you yeah. don't want to, you do. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, we're looking forward yeah. to it. I hope you have an awesome season. This sounds Thank like you. a great, great show. Thanks, Luann. Have fun, Riley. Thanks Thank for you. taking the time to come and hey, say hi. Hey, no problem. Anytime. We'll be back on TV. Right right after this.